Thank you, Tina. And thank y'all for joining online. And thank y'all for being here. Um, I just want to say thank you to Tina and to William for allowing his space here. I love this store, the Gospel Bookstore in Gretna. Um, if you need, the, we, we don't have that in Baton Rouge now. If you need a Christian bookstore with, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here going, I can't wait to go look at all this stuff. It's an amazing place. So thank y'all for having me today. Um, I am going to share on just what she said, trusting the power of the Holy Spirit in you as you create and publish your book. So just a quick raise of hands. Who calls himself an author or a writer? Is everybody here author or writer? Okay, awesome. Awesome. So we are like mine. I love it. It's like, I am. I'm not even straddling like, am I or am I not? Am I called to be? You know you are. So um, that's who I'm speaking to today. Oh, and I'm seeing some hands online. They're like, oh, yes, I am. All right. We're all in one accord on that. So I love, love, love that. Um, I never called myself a writer. I was an interior designer. In fact, I didn't even love Jesus for a lot of my life. I believed in God. I went to church but I did not love Jesus. He was my savior, but he was not my Lord. And he had big plans for me, just like he has for y'all. He has plans to prosper you. He's already deposited them in you. And I was doing my own plans, doing life my own way. When about 15 years ago, 14 years ago, the Lord decided to have a divine appointment. Thank you, Lord, that he did, that he loved me so much that he stopped me in my own tracks so that I could stand before him one day and not just slide into heaven because I took him as my savior, but to, to walk boldly into heaven and hear well done, come on in. But the second judgment we have is your rewards. What have you done for him? The first one is what he gave you. And the second judgment is what you gave unto him. And so that's what we're here talking about today. What is it that God's placed in you that you will do the work of his kingdom with these skills, these talents, this creative writing that he's placed in you? Everybody's in a different walk or arena with that. Some people are just starting. Some people have done 20 books. So we have somebody here, the 20 some people have two. I just finished my second book and um, I'm going to be speaking from this book today. This is my first book. It has a little bit of my testimony in it that tells how I fell in love with Jesus, how he just stopped me and um, through a, a, I guess you would say a subdivision or a, a business deal, um, he taketh away and he built me back up and he giveth back. So when God takes away, he didn't take away to punish and to, he takes away to build up bigger and better. And now I live and I don't do interiors for outward view. I help people with their inner interior, with their inner temples. That's what I do now. So I laid that part of my life down. It's like the old man and I'm in, living a new life with the Lord and he is my God and my king. And today he's going to be speaking to you as Tina gave me the topic or we role played what the topic was. Um, I'm going to put a lot of word in here because it's God himself. It's God. I don't want to tell you what I think. Um, testimonies are great. You know, encouraged by the word, you know, the, the testimony. Um, that's great. But I want that testimony to be this is what God did. I want to testify. This is what happened to me. And this is how God used it. So everything I say, I want to get, you know, I want to bring you back to the word. And so first of all, I want to talk about number one, that the way that you trust in the power of the Holy Spirit in you, as you create and publish your book, first of all, you have to know that the Holy Spirit is inside of you. I don't know that we have enough awareness. I've, I've um, My second book is really on that right there, that piece. Until you know that he is literally in the spirit realm, in the physical realm, he is in you. And so for you to be able to fellowship with you, with him, and to be able to hear him, do life with him, and allow him to help you create, that's step number one, is to know. And so where does it say in the Bible that he's in you? This is something that's really good if you already know it for you to know this address, because it's so good to share with a new believer. Because some people don't really understand that they are carrying around the tangible presence of God inside their body. You know, one day I was riding down the road and as I'm riding, I'm just, and I'm not praying. I'm not thinking about anything. I wasn't listening to the radio. I'm always in silence because I do. I am a listener. I'm listening for the spirit. But all of a sudden I just glance over and I see this, uh, this liquor bar and it says 
hocus pocus spirits within. And I was like, oh, and then I just turned back and he said, don't bring me in there. And I'm like, he didn't say don't go in there. He said, don't bring me in there. And when I said that, I, I was like, oh my gosh, everywhere I go, the spirit of God, I'm responsible for taking the spirit of God. Now we all see it like, oh yeah, we got God with us. He's with me. Now what about how the responsibility of where are you taking him? And that's not to say you don't go in dark places and preach the gospel, but you, this was the awareness. He was trying to get me so aware that I am in you so close to you that I'm in your body. You are housing me. We do life together. I've deposited myself in you. So it's the power in you, me, that can do all things. Not not Terry, not any, but God himself says, with me, all things. Greater is who, me, in you than anything in that world. You are, I'm your king. I'm responsible for you. You are inside of my kingdom. Don't worry about what's happening in the world because you're in this world, but you're not of the world. You're not of the world. And so number one is how do you create something that you've got inside of you And how do you bring that to life? Well, first of all, you have to know that it's the power of God that's going to help you do this. That's already inside of you. And so where is that in scripture? Second Corinthians 1 22. Okay. And it says, and he has identified us as his own. How? By placing the Holy Spirit in our hearts as the first installment that guarantees everything he has promised. Okay, so let's camp on that. Everything he's promised comes to us through us from Jesus. This is the book of his promises. Everything that we need. If you need provision to finish writing those books, Jesus is going to send it to you through his spirit. Ask him. I love how we open today. If we abide in him, in in 1 John 5, we just read that word. The word is going forth. If we abide in him and we step out in faith and we trust in him and our life is, our will is lined up with his will, our heart is to do what he wants, we can ask anything. And we don't have to know. I say all the time, Lord, I know you're going to bring it. I don't know how. I'm I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to use my energy because I would be worried. But I'm going to stand and I'm going to be watching. And call it forth. And you may need, we're going to talk about this in a minute. You may need to plant a seed. And I love because Tina talked about two seeds. I thought, well, there she goes. I'm going to be able to use her little examples because she has already prophesied how you do it. Okay. So number one is you have to know he's in you. It says in Jeremiah 1, 5, before I ever formed you in the womb, I knew you. So he knows you already. It's us learning who we are in him. God, it's not God trying to know who we are. It's us trying to know who we are. And when we go to God, he starts to reveal to us who he is and who we are in him. And it's through a fellow, the fellowship with him. Second Timothy says, guard that treasure that's entrusted to you. How do you guard it with the help of the Holy Spirit that already dwells in you? Remember when number one is we want to know he's inside of us. We're not doing this alone. The verse about Second Timothy. Mm-hmm. 1.14. Thank you. And this, I love this Proverbs 25, two. It is the glory of God to conceal things. God is actually glorified by concealing a matter. But guess what? It's the glory of kings. Everybody raise your hand. You are king in his kingdom. It's the glory of kings to search these things out. God is not a genie in a bottle. He is not going to have, now I say not, let me say most of the time, because God can do anything, okay? Most of the time, he's not going to knock at the door and say, here's the key to your car. Here's, look, these are the six people you're going to need for your book. Here's your editor. Here's your formatter. Here's your book cover. No, no, he's going to say, you can trust me, step out in faith, and I will make it happen, but you're going to have to be courageous and step out on this, okay? You're going to have to, Okay, the editors, if you're looking for an editor, well, then start asking, ask people, ask God to put somebody in your path, start talking to people, take that action step, that step of faith. Okay, so God's gifts and calls are irrevocable. This is Romans eleven twenty nine. 29. Now I told y'all, I didn't always love the Lord or serve the Lord, but there came a time where I started falling in love with him and my heart started changing towards him to where everything that I do now is based in him and him alone, his kingdom, eternal treasure. I want to stand before him and I'm more concerned about eternal treasure than I am earthly treasure. He wants us to have them both, but your heart 
And so he's put a call in each of you. You each are called to preach the gospel in some form or fashion. It may just be bringing food to a friend. With you, it's writing. I'm sure if that's your gift, he is going to use your writing to glorify his kingdom. Sometimes he'll use your writing. You know, when I first started out, I, I just wanted to be like John Maxwell. You know, I can teach the positive. I can teach good. I can take, give me the microphone. I can stand on the stage, but do not make me preach this word of God. Mm -hmm. Oh, does he have a sense of humor? Does he have a sense of humor? I thought that I was going to teach everybody how they can make their house beautiful. He goes, oh, you go teach that. You go teach that. All right. Had no idea. So sometimes it's a process. Sometimes he might let you write in a certain area that just creates a market or so to speak, and then he'll switch, or maybe that's how your money comes. And then he gets you to preach the gospel some other way, you know, through your workplace, or it looks different for everybody, but we're all called and we all have gifts and callings that are irrevocable. Now irrevocable means that he is not going to take them away from you, but you get to choose if you glorify him and use them, you get to choose. And so the first time I heard this, I thought, golly, that's kind of, oh, you know, how am I going to say no, Lord? And he said, well, you get to, but now it's like, I don't want to, I want to answer that call. Just like Rahab, she was good on her game, hiding men. And when God got a hold of her, she hid the right man for him. So see, it was already there. She was operating in it in the world. But when God comes along, he says, yeah, I'm going to take what I gave you, even the very breath the very thoughts you think, I'm going to take that and I'm going to, as if you allow me to, I'm going to let you glorify me because it's going to come back on you when you stand before me because I'm making a place for you right now. And how you live this life, okay, I want y'all to hear this piece. How you live this life has a direct impact on how you will spend eternity. That's what people don't preach. What you're doing now matters. You know, when I first started writing and I was like, I asked my husband, I said, what story should I tell about me and my writing and how this happened? And, you know, because I wasn't an author, I could speak, but speakers are different than authors because you kind of speak slang bullet points. It makes sense. You don't really have good sentence and grammar. And um, so there was a learning curve for me and I was very resistant to it. I'm like, Lord, let me just get a job and I can teach Sunday school. I mean, really, look, can I just get a job with some money, come home at five and teach Sunday school? And he said, no, I'm going to teach you to write like you decorate a Christmas tree. And I'm like, well, if you can do that, Lord God, I'm going to be a seriously good writer because I can flat decorate a Christmas tree. I'm going to hold you to your word, Lord God. Now, he didn't tell me how long it would take. Okay. He didn't tell me how much I would struggle and persevere. Mm -hmm. But if God gives you a word, if you're in a place and you're like, I don't know if I can keep doing this. I don't want to do this. I think if there's any resistance, lay it down and ask the Lord, give me a word that I can hold on to. Because if you get a rhema word, not a logos, logos is good. The word of God is Jesus himself. But when you get a rhema word, a word directly from the throne room from God, when you get a rhema word, he is faithful to perform his word. And all you have to do is sit back and say, you said it, God, you told me, Lord, you told me. So I'm dependent upon you. Make it happen. I'll do my part. I'll do my natural and you add your super. You add your super. So your gift and calling is irrevocable and you get to decide if you answer the call. Okay. So I think most of you've answered the call. I just want to tell you the first piece is you have to know the spirit is in you. The second piece is you have to know that the spirit is on you. Because if you go without the anointing of that, you are in your own works. And I'm going to just go ahead and tell you, I'm pretty sure if you've walked with the Lord at all for any small length of time, you know that you do not want to go anywhere. Like I said, if you don't go, I'm not going because I will have to start over. I will have to learn too many lessons. If you don't go before me, behind me, speak to me along the way, and sometimes make it happen to where I didn't even have to, then Lord God, I don't want to go. And so number two is that the Spirit's on you. And what I mean by that is the Spirit's in you for you. He's in you to for y'all's fellowship. To, it says that the Spirit will bear witness, that he will teach you things that you do not know, that the Spirit is how you hear the voice of God. It's inside of you, so it's for you. It's for your sanctification process. But the Spirit on you is the anointing you carry. Every one of you, if he's called you to write, you carry that anointing. 
You carry that anointing and ask the Lord to give you a vision, a dream, a picture, a word, let you know and see what that looks like. Because, you know, it's different for some people. Like my anointing lies with prayer and teaching the word. I know that now. I didn't always know that. I had to I had to persevere and learn that. And it, the anointing now is on the words. I now speak and God has put his anointing on my words. It's not my words. And then he, I didn't always have this. It's the mantle I carry now that he has placed upon me. Each of you have it or he wouldn't ask you to write. And so it looks differently. Like some people are called to do just devotionals. Some people are called to write more in story. Some people are more teachy. Like you have that and it's already in you. And God wants you to stay in that lane. Don't look to the right at what Kathy's doing or Jack's doing, because it might not be what he's asking you to do. His Favor and his glory and his anointing rest on what he's called you to do. Jesus even said, Father, I'm finished my work and I did what you gave me to do. John the Baptist was the forerunner. He didn't go out and decide to teach. And no, he was just to prophesy and was a forerunner. He did his job well. In fact, God even said, Jesus even said, there's no man greater than him. I'm like, oh, that's a good little nugget right there. If you stay in what God sent you to do and you do it well, it will be well for you. It will be well for you. Otherwise, you get there at the end and stand before him and he's like, well, you did three of the things, but that's not really what I called you to. That's not what I had for you. That's not what the anointing that I put on you to do, that you carried, that I placed in you before you were ever even born. And so number two is he's on you. And what does that look like? Because he's on you for others. He's not on you for you to be glorified. He's on you for his glory. He's on you so that you can show up in confidence with him and he can speak to you from inside and you're in your lane and people are uh, grown, if you will, because of that anointing, transformed, increased. There's a it, the anointing is what fell on Jesus when he was baptized and he came out of the water and the heavens opened. OK, then that is the spirit that descended, that landed upon him, that he walked with. And when you know that the spirit is on you for that particular thing, you show up with confidence. You don't show up wondering, will he really show up or am I? You know, he's going to show up like, you know, because it's not, not even about me. Like today, I don't I did my work and he's going to do his. Y'all will have things when you leave here. He will do more ministering to you this week than he's doing right now. Because it's not me talking. It's the spirit of God that's depositing in you. And he's going to come. He's going to speak to you this week and say, he's going to recount to you one little word, one little thing. And it's going to be what you need for due season for right now. So number one, he's on you. Number two, I mean, number one, he's in you. Number two, he's on you. Now, I want to just, um, why do we need to hear the spirit? You know, um, because you want to be walking in his will, in God's will. So for example, I, when I wrote my first book, this one here, I, um, I fasted and prayed because I, this was my first book and I'm not, I wasn't by nature a writer. Like if you are a writer by nature and you have that skill, glory be to God for you. Praise you. You are blessed. I had to learn. It was a struggle. Uh, I'm very creative. Okay. When he says a measure will be more, I'm like, Lord, then I can't imagine what you're going to do because I have a serious imagination. Okay. I'm very creative. I can make things beautiful. But so he said to me, this is why you need the spirit. It's different for everybody. But I fasted and I prayed because I'm like, we well, do this. And I did it the old way. I didn't use the computer. I would take a piece of paper, chapter one, chapter two, and I would put this paper on the wall and I would take them and I, oh, that's a nugget little post-it. That goes in that chapter. That goes, oh no, that goes back over here. I know this chapter needs to be switched. That's how I did it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm sure there's better ways now. No, no, that's how you do it. No, but Walt Disney did that. Oh, his story boards. Well, there you go. So there I'm doing it and don't even know. So thank you, girl, for validating me. So, and so what happened is I couldn't decide what the name of the chapters were, you know, because I, I would think of a good thing. So I thought. And so he said to me one day, I want you to name the chapters from a word, a rhema word that I spoke to you. Duh. He said, because then the anointing is already on it. And so when I gave my, and so this is why you need to hear the voice of the Lord while the spirit's inside of you. Cause I gave this to my first editor and they said, okay, girl, you're going to have to at least, okay. First of all, you're going to have to change a couple of titles in this chapter in your chapters. Mm -hmm. Oh, in the name of Jesus, these <laughs> chapters are going to be what they're called. And she said, well, one of them, it says, I am enough. And she goes, that's kind of overused. I said, girl, I'm going to just tell you, 
it's not changing. You need to go on to read page one because this will never be touched in Jesus' name because I knew what God told me and I was going to be obedient because blessings follow obedience, not what a good editor says. Now, is it a good word for somebody else? Maybe, but the word of God is above every word. He said, I gave my word authority. Okay. He is the word. Jesus is the word. Okay. He says in Psalms 138 too, he says, I bound to deal toward your holy temple and give thanks to your name for your steadfast love and faithfulness for you have exalted above all things, your name and your word. Oh, when you hear the voice of God and you get a word, you can go the bank on it. You can go the bank on it. God is faithful to perform his word, not the editors, not a good friends. When you walk with the Lord, when you're doing things for the Lord, I can tell you, you're going to get some people that, that are going to say, I don't know. Tina shared that earlier. And guess what? That's the things that the Lord talks about, that there will be struggles that there will be struggles and count it as all joy when you walk through that because it creates an experience with him. And then he says, oh, you go ahead, baby. I saw what you did. Got your back. I got your back. I'll send a Jew to stand up for you. Watch God go. Watch him go. Okay, so number one, he's in you. Number two, he's on you. I want you to meditate and get a revelation of that because when you walk in that, there's a power that there's nothing in this world that can take you out. Nothing is greater than the name of God, the word of God, and the spirit inside of you. That's good stuff. Okay, so then we get to the second part. And the second part says, trusting the power of the Holy Spirit in you as you create and publish your book. Um, Okay, so I want to just talk about trust. And then we're talking about create. Trust is only to the level you know him. Okay, so this is like so mighty. You can only trust God to the level you know him. Nobody trusts somebody they don't know. If you do, that's not good. I'm going to just tell you right now, don't do it. Okay. It happens through watching them. You will know them by their fruit. It happens through fellowship when you talk and share. And can they be trusted? Oh, yeah, I've shared before and they didn't run their mouth. You know, whatever trust is built. Develop a relationship. You, it's relationship. That's what I'm talking about. You develop a relationship. God wants you to trust him, but what he wants more is he wants to do life with you. He wants to fellowship with you. Okay. You get to choose whether you do that because when we're born again, we become our position changed. We become a son and daughter into the kingdom. That doesn't change, but whether or not you decide to fellowship with him and do life with him, you get to choose because he's always on here. I am. You get to choose what you share, the time you spend, the amount of word, the amount of God you have in you. Somebody says, well, how do you how do you get more God? And I said this right here. The amount of God that's in you is the amount of word that's planted in your heart. This is God. The word of God is God. You want to know him? It says in um, uh, Colossians, it says, if you want to know God, the one that no one's seen, get to know Jesus because he's this very image of God. This is Jesus. Jesus is the word. Okay, so that's how you get to know him. Get, get, spend time with him. Now, in this place, this is probably the hardest place, this place of in between. Everybody, if you've already written a book, you probably passed that place of in between. If you're writing one, my first book took 10 years. There's people that say, Oh, I went out for a weekend, I wrote a book. I'm going to slap them. How did they write a book? It's taken me 10 years, Lord Jesus. You said you would do it, Lord God. Why, Lord? Why? I mean, that's what I'm not there. Thank you, Lord. And my husband says, thank you, Jesus, that she's not there because he had to walk with me through that. Oh, he's like, oh, just hold on to the word he gave you. Hold on to the word. Yes, I'll hold on with my fingernails. So, but the next book I did in a year. And then she just testified that she did one in two books in one year. I'm, I'm on her page now. I'm on her page now. because I Because, you know, once you've done something, once you've learned, once you've got things established as a foundation, it gets easier. And I'm pretty sure if you're a writer, you're writing more than one book. Just as a word for somebody. You think you're writing one and then all of a sudden you're like, oh, I got something else in me, another baby to birth. So what I want to tell you is I wish somebody would have told me just enjoy and rest in the process. Embrace the process because Ecclesiastes says when you, when God does a work in you, it's always about you first before the book. Okay. The book is really about you. God does work in you and 
it is when he's finished, then nothing could be added or taken away. And so it's complete. It's like in the Monopoly game. You will not have to go back and start over. You can keep going towards boardwalk, that narrow way, though, not the boardwalk of the world. I want to make it clear because <laughs> it's almost funny that that's called boardwalk. And he says, my way's narrow. The world, yeah. So, but girl, the board, the narrow way of God is mighty. Okay. It's mighty. And you don't get to know that until you've walked with him usually a long time. Mm -hmm. And then it gets sweeter and sweeter. So I just want to encourage you, if you're in that waiting time, if you're in the middle, if you're in the, my book when in that quick, just know you're right where you're supposed to be, but keep persevering. That's what perseveres in there. Keep going, keep going till you get to the other side. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about sowing seeds, and then we're going to go to the part um, about the creativity. So sowing seeds a lot of times um, is words, okay? The word of God, and this I, I have to do this quickly because it's a Bible study in itself. And so I'm hoping you know enough about this, and if not, I want you to dig in. But a seed is something you plant. He said that if you don't know this parable, you won't understand any of them. Okay, so it's like the granddaddy of them all that it says in Genesis that I've given you seeds and it'll be seed time and harvest until Jesus returns. Everything God does in this kingdom is better to give than receive. He means, no, it's better to give first so that you receive back. Okay, it's not better to give and you're supposed to do without. That's a lie. I don't even know religion. It's better to give because he said, hey, I'm going to tell you a secret. Tell you a secret. And we heard Tina say this earlier. Be a giver. And watch what comes back. Don't be focused on what you get because I'm not a God of being focused on what's me, me, me. It's how can I serve when your heart postures? How can I give? How can I serve? How can I make somebody's life better? Then all of a sudden you watch. The blessing overtakes you, chases you down. Tina shared that. She got on the board because she offered to help. She wasn't thinking, let me see how I can climb the ladder and get some little strokes and feathers in my hat. No, she wasn't, her heart wasn't postured because if it's postured like that, it's not time for promotion. Ooh. But when your heart is postured to how can I serve? How can I give? Lord, use me, use me up, oh God. And that didn't mean to you're dry. Use me so I can be filled again so that I can be about your kingdom. Okay, so that's sowing seeds. So the words, I want you to really say, over your work, over your hands, over your book, whatever stage you're in, lay your hands on your book before it's a book when it's just scratch on paper and you speak the blessing over it because he says the prayers of a righteous man, you are righteous by the blood of Jesus, availeth much. Okay, so you say, I thank you, Father, that you had given me, like you created in the beginning, you created the spirit hovered in Genesis 1, 1 and 3. It says that uh, now the earth was empty. The, this book is not here yet. The earth is empty. Darkness was all around the surface of the earth. Oh, confusion, not sure what it'll be, how it'll come about. All of about me in the spirit of God, which is in you and on you, the spirit hovered and God spoke by faith and there was light. That's what you do with your book. Wherever stage you're in, you prophesy over that book. You talk, you I thank you, Father, that the works of my hand are blessed. I'm going to show you what it looks like. Thank you, Father, that everything my hand touches prospers, not maybe, but shall prosper. Because, Lord, if it doesn't look in the natural like it prospered, you say Romans 8, 28, that you'll turn it around and you use it for my good and your glory. So I thank you, Father, that I cannot fail in your kingdom. If it looks like a failure in the natural, it's only a lesson in the spirit. Oh, I thank you, God. And, Lord, the people, I pray for the people that will read these words. Lord, I pray that your spirit would write these words. I pray that as I read it, I will even be ministered to from the work of God through me, oh, God. Use me, Lord. Let me. I am a ready writer, oh God. So you see, when you pray over your work like that and you call your work prosperous, prosperous, I thank you that I will sell millions, oh God, not because of me, but because you will set me up, because you will do things I can't even imagine. Ephesians 3.20, speak his word because he's quick to perform his word, mm -hmm. not yours. Thank you that you say you can do immeasurably more. If I can think, oh, I could go different places and sell them, you know, and you could do more than that. Show me, Lord, give me a dream so I can speak into it, so I can hold on to it. Sow seeds, words, prophecy over the works of your hand. Sow seeds. Now, what Tina did today, which I loved, is she talked about sowing in different ways. And so there's a tangible example. I can remember when I, she, so she gave and it came back. 
So think about what you need in your writing. Like I, God sets me up and he, I say it and I share a lot about this in here, how I, I bought this 55 acres and I, I was, I, 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 I was used to everything working because the blessing of the Lord was on me because of my father and my grandmother. I mean, I had the, the Lord had a calling on me. And so everything my hand touched did prosper. And so guess what? I didn't think I needed God. And he's like, oh, I'm going to show you, little girl. I'm going to show you who you need. It was the hardest, sweetest thing I ever walked through. I bought 55 acres. He speaks to you how you listen. I love the art of property deal. Remember, I'm a house builder. I'm an interior designer. I sold houses. And so he said, okay, go ahead, buy that 55 acres. Let's watch you go, little girl. And boy, over the next seven years, I went from flipping a house, making $200,000 to I could not buy a coffee pot. And he goes, yeah, tell me who, tell me about yourself now and on your knees with your nose to the ground. Who is I am? I'm him. Yes, Lord, I am nothing if you don't show up. I am nothing if you don't speak to me. I am nothing if I go do busy work at the end of the day, if your sings not on it, whatever that looks like. So I share a little bit about that in here. But the creation of how you give, one of the things he did is when I started writing this book, I had no idea what reviews mean. I had no idea. You get those things and people say, well, you write a review and you're like, next, delete. Oh, but God said, little girl, you don't know, but you're going to need some reviews. And so I started like, oh my gosh, yes, Lord. Thank you for, thank you for that spirit inside of me, talking to me and setting me up before I got there. And so I started looking on my bookshelf and I'm like, I'm give that person a review. I read that book. Let me give, give me that book. Give me that book. I started taking out books and I'm said, this is my review day in the name of Jesus. I'm about to sow some seeds. Sow seeds into what you need because whatever seed it is brings you that harvest. When a, when a farmer plants corn seed, he expects a harvest of corn. In the spirit realm, if we plant whatever we plant with great intention, expect for the harvest to look like that. Now, money seeds, you can name a money seed. That's why the prosperity message got so mixed, so hard. Yeah. You really can label a money seed. And it comes back. But the prosperity is like, oh, if you give this, you'll get that. And they made it all about that. Well, you're not getting anything. Tina even said it when she was reading that. If your heart posture is not right with the Lord, if you want the presence with the bow instead of the presence of the Lord, he's going to get that right before he ever releases gifts upon you. So, so I want you to know this principle. And today, if this is all you get is this is an area that the Lord says, so in this area. Okay, so it may be for me what he did is he said the reviews, and so I started get I started writing reviews way before I needed them, way before he was hooking me up. I was like, I have to bless her. I mean, to get get on that Amazon where you need a review, girl. Everybody asked, can I review your book? They're like, oh yes, indeed, this place. And so I I just had a season where I got a revelation of that. Okay, what about if you need somebody to read your book? How about you be a reader? Because you're going to need readers. You're going to need a lot of readers. Okay. I'm not editing. I can't edit. I can't sow seeds. Now I can buy somebody an editor. I can pay for an editor. I mean, just, I'm talking about what are your options here? What do you need? Because he's not going to show up as a genie. If you show him, Lord, you, sh this is my next thing, Lord. I'm asking for you to hook me up, set me up, show me where I can sow a seed. Cause it says, sow it into fertile ground. Show me where, show me where to sow it. So I know it'll come back with a mighty and look, it says in the Gospels, 30, 60, 100 fold. It says in Luke 30, it doesn't say 30, 60. It only says 100. In Luke, it says 100 fold. And that's it. I'm the 100 fold girl, Lord. Show me that fertile soil. I'm going to water my seed with my words. And with the Holy Spirit, living waters. That's, that's a teaching in itself. Okay. I didn't ask how much time do I have? How much time do we have left? Because I can. Okay, good. Good. Because I want to teach y'all something really good that I just learned. Okay. So now we talked about seed sowing. Let me see if I gave you everything on that. Um, everything starts with the word seed, even a thought. So as a man thinketh, so he is. Like you, even the way you get saved. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, then you shall be saved unto wholeness. That means everything made whole. Everything we do is you have to believe it first and then say it, and then you'll walk in it. So it is the name and claim it made it horrible, but I'm here to tell you 
that that is a principle of God and you are getting what you are saying. Mark 11, 23 says, if you believe it, when you say it, you'll get what you say. If you say, I have no money, then guess what you're going to get? Angels listen and hearken to the word of God. They listen and does the prayers of the righteous men that availeth much. Your thoughts become prayers. I just taught that in my Bible studies. Amazing how I saw that in Luke. Your thoughts are really your prayers because he hears your thoughts. So you're saying unto the Lord, when you get in close fellowship with him, what you're thinking is really what you're saying unto him. So if your thoughts are nasty and ugly and not pure and righteous and holy and good, confess them, stop them and exchange them, exchange them for truth, exchange them for something lovely and kind and good. Like there's where the work starts. And so as you pray, as you think and what you will say, what you think, whether you realize it or not, start listening to your words because you're getting what you say, Mark 11, 23 through 26. If you believe it when you say it, you will get what you say. And so you don't just say it over and over and hope it happens. And no, it has to be planted in your heart. It has to be backed by the word. It's this that takes you want to take root. And so you find whatever area you're in lack. Let's say if you don't believe God's going to show up for you, but he shows up for somebody else, then you have to get a scripture that you can stand on, that he loves you, has no favorites, and that he has plans for you, and they're already in you, that whatever the belief is that's blocking you, just exchange it with the word, and if you pay attention, it will come out of your mouth, because out of the out of river, living waters flow out of you. The issues of life flow out of you. Your personal issues flow out of you. All right, so um, don't miss sewing. All right, so this is what I want to teach y'all now. This is just so good. I just learned this this year. Well, I guess I taught it at my retreat, so maybe um, maybe a little, probably about eight months ago. So the Holy Spirit that we just learned is in us and on us. The Holy Spirit, okay? The Holy Spirit is Jesus. So this is the menorah, and it's in Isaiah eleven two. So whenever you want to know, oh, oh yeah, yeah, oh good, yes. Here you go. Isaiah 11, 2. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go there. If you got your Bible, I see some people going there. If you got your Bible, let's go there. Let's stop a minute and go. Where is Isaiah? And I just want to tell you, it's a side note. Right in your Bibles. Oh, I do. Who writes in their Bible? I used to. Right now, I just do it on my phone. Yeah, okay, because girl, you, you have graduated on that phone. Yeah, this is thing making yes, <laughs> this is my mama's Bible right here. And she passed away in 2020, and we were very close. She lived with me for 12 years. And these are her, some of these are her markings in here. And I'm telling you, I'm reading this, and I can hear her voice, and I can hear her encouragement, and I feel like I'm drinking coffee with her. So you it's a love letter. Um, and I so knew her heart and it's just glorious. So I just want to encourage you writing your Bible, but this is also why it shows you how God's moved in your personal life. It is, it's so encouraging because you're like, oh my gosh, look what you've done. I've struggled with that and I'm not even there anymore. So it's a good track record. And right then when you get a word from the Lord, do not just say it's this, write specifically what he said, because the way he says it, a lot of times our filter changes the wording. Mm -hmm. And so if you write what he says and let him minister, and this is going to tie into this, then you will get more understanding of what he's really saying, not what you think he's saying. Okay, so Isaiah eleven two says, and the spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of, so what is the spirit of the Lord? What are the seven parts of him? We're talking about Jesus. He's talking about Jesus is going to come. He's prophesying that Jesus will be coming. He's the Lord, the Lord of Lord, the King of Kings. And it says that the spirit is going to rest upon him. We just talked about that. The spirit rests on you. And what is the spirit? What is the spirit made of? What are the components or the pieces of the Holy Spirit, the parts of the Holy Spirit? And so here it is. And I want y'all to see it in reference to this. So this is Jesus. And when you study this, it's all made of gold. There's no soldering. It's all molded out of Jesus. Jesus is the core, the center of everything. The whole world's held in being by Jesus. Like he is the word by the very word of God, very Jesus. All right. So then the spirit, and I want you to see how they hold hand of wisdom and understanding. So let's just stop on that wisdom and understanding, wisdom and understanding. They go together. If God gives you a word, gives you some wisdom. Terry, title your, your book, these, these titles, but you don't have understanding of which book, 
Um, the book I'm writing now, because sometimes I'm writing three because I'm a little ADD and I got three here to me ministering over here. And then which book? That's the understanding. You can have a loaded gun if you get a word of wisdom and you don't let him give you understanding. They go together. They go together. When God gives you a word of wisdom, then say, Holy Spirit, minister understanding. How can I understand what you're speaking to me? Because he can tell me something that looks completely different from somebody else. Like example, I have a prayer group that um, the Lord's like, I want you to teach people how to hear my voice. And so I have a lady there that's been in my Bible studies and she got a vision of a chariot with horses. And she said, I hear hooves of horses. I hear the hooves. I hear the hooves. And so she said, I said, pray into that, pray into that. So she prayed into that and she started just kind of prophesying that the Lord was saying, I need you to let me be the leader of this carriage. I need you to step up into this carriage. When you hear these hooves, know that I am guiding you. So that was her meaning. She got that vision. That was a word of knowledge, wisdom, a picture. But then the next morning, I'm having my quiet time. And I read in the Bible where um, with the part, Red Sea was parted and it said, I, and I don't even really see chariots. I, that's just not something that resonates with me. But he was teaching me something. And he, the Red Sea parted and they could hear the hooves of the horses coming after them. The enemy was coming after them. And he said to me, when you hear the hooves of the horses, horses do not look back. I got your back. You were shielded by me. You keep going. The same word. Chariots and horses, the sound of hooves meant one thing to one, but the ministering of the understanding, the understanding for me was completely different. So when God gives you a word, wisdom, make sure you get understanding. They go hand in hand. Okay. So the next part of the Holy Spirit that's in you and on you, okay, will teach you counsel and might, counsel and might. Now what that is, counsel is plans. When you get counsel, you get a plan. Okay. You get um, somebody that's on board with you. You get, so you get a plan to how you going to walk this out. I got this word. I got understanding. I know that I'm supposed to, the word is title your chapters. This I'm understanding against this book. Now what's my plan with this book? Okay. What's my plan. And then next is the courage to walk it out. The might, the strength, because those go hand in hand. How many times have we gotten some good information, gone to a conference, maybe even a word from the Lord in our journal, but we didn't have the courage to walk the plan out. So a plan without strength and courage and might is just a good, good chapter in a book. Okay. And then lastly, in the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And I love this because it's a very base or foundation fear that stops with fear of the Lord. None of this is any good if you don't fear the Lord. If you don't have an awestruck fear and move and live unto him, none of this matters. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the last one is knowledge and fear of the Lord. They hold hands. This is a symbol of what's in you. The light of God is in you. This is the light. So the three things today is he's, you have to know he's in you and he's on you. Trust. It's not you doing it. It's your trust. You put your trust in him. That a lot of times is a process. What does that look like? How does that? It's a learned process through fellowship. I love how she did that relationship with him. He literally teaches you how to trust him. He will show off in ways that you can't help but trust him. You're like, oh, I'm going to believe what God said because I saw what he did. You know, I don't care what Kathy says, you know, and you may not even want to share with Kathy. And I'm using that as it. You may not want to share with so-and-so, you know, Mary was wise and she held the word close to her heart for the right season, for the right season. Sometimes you just not want to share a word. You don't need to share a word. Jesus had 12 and he had three and he had one. He was with his father. Then he had his three. He didn't take all 12 when he was going to do the hard work because he didn't want to hear what the naysayers say. These are the ones that you can, that, you know, that trust is, is tight. And then he had the 12. Okay. That's how it's a model. And then lastly is the way you create this book. It starts with your very words. 
which should line up with his words. I love Tina said it is his will. This is his will. This is his new Testament. This is his new will. It came into effect when he died. This will is his child's. It's yours. You have an inheritance in here, everything to forget, not his benefits. And when you take his word, his promise, and you trust in him and you speak what he says, you can already have it's finished. You already have it. You just have to take it and appropriate it by faith. And then as you do that, as you do that, then you start taking a walk, a step out in faith. I'm going to read these words um, as a closing. So I want you just to like absorb them, receive them, put your name in there. Mm-hmm. Jeremiah 17, 7, 8. Blessed is the man who believes in and trusts and relies on the Lord. So if I was my Bible, I would scratch it out and say, Terry is the woman that believes and trusts and relies in you, O oh God. Because what happens when I do that? When my hope and my confidence is in the Lord, he, not me, he shall be like a tree planted. Oh, I will be like the tree planted. I'm sorry. When I trust in him, I will be like a tree planted by the river's of waters that spread out and its roots will go deep in the river. Our roots are going deep in Jesus and it shall not see and fear when heat comes or famine or wickedness in the world, but its leaf shall be green. It doesn't matter if banks are going under, if people out there can't, God will take care of his people. But believe me, it has a lot to do with you and what you say and what you believe. You can turn God's word on or off. You send it out or you step on it. And we shall be, we shall be, we shall not be anxious and full of the cares in the year of drought. So it's a, it's a drought. We know it's a drought out there, but we don't care. We're not worried because we will still yield fruit. We will still yield fruit. Philippians 4, 13, I can do all things which he has called me to do. I answered that call, oh God. But how am I going to do this, Lord? It's through you, through him, his strength and his power that's inside of me. That power that's inside of you is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. That power is going to fulfill his purpose. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. You know, religion has made us so scared to use the word I. You know, I'm not scared to say I anymore. He broke me down, but it's I comes after the great I am. I know I have to do some work and it's him that's really doing it in and through me. So when you get that in order, you have to be bold enough to know that you have to love you. You have to be whole in him. You have to be confident that he's placed that in you so that you show up and he can use you. And then you give him all the glory. If he didn't show up today, none of this, I'm, this would be some good words. Just say, okay, that's some good, that's a good idea to, or concept. But boy, if the rain is on it, the, the anointing is on it, he's going to use that in your life because it's his word that grows. It has roots on it. It's alive. It's active. John 15, four through nine, abide in me. So see, here's what he was saying. This is the requirement. This is the requirement right here. You abide in me and I'm in you. And we learned today he's in us. So we get to decide if we abide in him. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much good fruit. Now I just prophesy that over you today. If you're abiding in him, he promises that. And if you don't abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. And the gathers and get thrown in the fire. So he's talking about the end days, the ones that decide, "Mm, I don't want that Jesus. But Lord, we just choose today to abide in you. And Lord, we just close with this word, Lord, that um, your people, we're your people, oh God. We're your people and we humble ourselves before you, oh God. And you said you will heal the earth. We are from the earth. And so, Lord, we thank you, Lord God, that we're a spirit man inside of this earth suit about your kingdom business. That we, this is just a blink of an eye and that we are storing up eternal treasure as representatives in your kingdom, oh God. I thank you that today, that maybe there just be a little shift in a perspective about what we're doing and why. And Lord, that it would glorify you and only you, Lord. Use us, use your people. Lord, let us be your mouthpiece. Let us be your writers, your 
speakers, your authors, your ready writers, oh God. Use our hands, our feet, our, our words, oh God. Give us the words, Lord. I ask that you would impart words, downloads, Lord, that these people today that have heard this message, Lord, that they would actually encounter you in such a way they have never encountered before, glory to glory, and that they would look at their own work and say, this is good. Wow. Look what you did, God. I could not have come up with this, but you did, God. I worship you and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.